Diseases and previously unknown ailments have been an increasing concern in the modern world. <coughs> and our wildlife is just as prone to sickness and disease as we are. Throughout my wildlife adventures in Louisiana, I've noticed some of our snakes aren't looking too good, with sores, lesions, and skin infections becoming much more common. And the reason for this is a fungus. Hey guys, I'm Zachary Gray, and on this adventure, we're going to be getting to the bottom of this mysterious disease. These are cauliflower mushrooms. It's a fungus, but the fungus that we're looking for is a little bit more complicated. We'll be joined by researchers and good friends Shiv, Eli, and Dr. Sean Doody from the University of South Florida for some super important reptile research. Our aim is to catch as many snakes from crucial conservation sites as possible and compare how the disease is spreading in these environments as opposed to less natural habitats. We're starting out in the cypress swamps, a habitat that we're seeing a lot more of these sick animals in. Take a look at this yellow-bellied water snake. This animal is covered in scabs and sores, a result from infection of a fungus, snake fungal disease. This emergent parasitic fungi, Ophidiomyces, was described and named pretty recently back in 2009, and is believed to have begun its spread from the pet trade, originally emerging from Southeast Asia. It's going to be an action-packed week of snake catching. Got him, got him, got him. Oh, ring that, ring that. Oh, yes. You got it. It's hard to find time to sit and chat on a project like this. It's all hands on deck for the next few days, and every snake counts. What about the swamp snake right next to that? Ooh. Oh, nice. I got that on camera too. <laughs> so, so Put that on your YouTube channel. After collecting a sample, the snake is released back into the environment, where it's given a chance to overcome its disease state. While there are treatments for fungal diseases, there's no widespread cure which means we're going to have to figure something out. And we're going to have to catch a lot of snakes to do that. So it's off to the bayous. I'm about to start bringing y'all snakes out of this thing. There's a lot. There's, uh, there's two more to my right as well. Got him. Okay. That's the hardest snake I've ever gotten. <laughs> Zach, good job, dude. Nice. Good stuff. Had to jump on him. Oh, nice. Got him. And didn't even get wet. <laughs> Got it. Not only are there a lot of snakes out here, but my all-time favorite snake decided to make an appearance as well. No way! <laughs> oh my gosh, bro. So we just found the target of the entire trip, this beautiful little Louisiana milk snake. These guys get about two feet in length and they're primarily eating lizards and other small snakes. They actually face poaching as probably their number one threat. So every time these guys are found, people just take them out of the wild. So if you're ever out in the wild and you're looking for snakes, make sure that you appreciate the snake and you respect it. Uh, just take their photos and then leave it where you found it. This is a wonderful snake. Huge thanks to Zach. Let's go ahead and put it back and keep on with this study. It's so important to me that we keep these habitats healthy but it is a rough scenario. Just like with any human disease, solutions can be complicated and expensive. It's rough, but we'll do what we can. Now it's time to get into the cities and see how the snakes are faring over there. Oh, Ring neck. Nice. Got him. And here we go, we are getting into stacks, quite literally. Come on, please, please, something, anything. My life's in jail. <laughs> I can't believe it. Shiv is the one spearheading this work across the southeast currently, collecting samples that can hopefully be used to give us an idea of where these diseases are occurring and if there's anything we can do about it. They know I'm the snake doctor, so they oh, just like, see? Look at that. He's cute. He's told me that this disease tends to be more prevalent in aquatic species and is often more lethal for pit vipers. So we'd have to make sure to catch a few of those along the way as well. We got a nice little good sized cottonmouth here to swab. Doesn't look like he has any symptoms or anything of SFD. Looks pretty healthy. So we got what we needed and get him released. Snake fungal is keratinophilic, a big fancy word that basically just means it grows on keratin materials. Things like hair, nails, horns, or in this case, the snake scales. The disease becomes lethal whenever the animal is either overcome with injuries or becomes internally infected normally around the nose, pits, or eyes. Fungal diseases are pretty widely problematic for both people and animals. Many frog populations have been totally wiped by fungal disease. Bats have been hit incredibly hard, and even larger mammals can suffer from fungal infections. Parasitic fungi are really difficult to treat for a multitude of reasons, so understanding how they're spread in the first place is crucial. 
This study is well into the hundreds of snakes, and with all those snakes so far, we've only seen a few showing symptoms. But it wasn't until this king snake that we got to see some devastating effects of this disease. Just look at him. This beautiful animal is looking really rough. Her scales look like they're rotting off her body. I wish there was more we could do for all of these animals, but it's a rough scenario. Wildlife disease research is oftentimes understudied, and it's our job as caretakers and conservationists to do a better job managing our ecosystem's health. And I hope that myself and all of you watching at home can be a small part to big solutions. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something new, and I will see you guys next time.